Hey YouTube, it's your boy Widgie here. And if you guys are live right now on Twitch, you can by all means say hello. I'm gonna be showing you today a Lakota sort of build order that was created by Kaleli, but obviously before then many people have been doing it. But I've been finding it really, really enjoyable. And it's a different way of playing Lakota to the generic kind of bow rider opening that you mainly see. This is gonna be an age two play with lots of land units and we do something a little bit funky at the start that I've never really seen before when you play Lakota. It's kind of a little market sort of trick that you do to really get your eco going early in the game. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm going to be playing against Bratsky here, a uh, British opponent. And I've been doing this on the ladder, guys. This is a 1v1 ranked game. And... Um, I know that I said that I was playing a lot of India and I wanted to stick with India, but I thought, you know what, screw that. If I'm not enjoying India or if I'm just getting frustrated, I'm just going to play a different Civ. And um, I looked at Lakota and I thought it was quite fun. I do enjoy the natives anyway. And um, I found this build order and I wanted to do something different. So all you need to do is gather up your crates, start. <clears throat> and you want to get yourself a market down. Now, if my voice sounds weird and if it starts breaking and sounds awful, it's because I'm still sort of recovering from um, sort of like a fever that I had, or whatever you want to call it, over the last couple of days. So apologies. But this is a really important bin. I'm just going to quick the pause again and I hope it's all good. What you want to do here is you want to sell food. You want to sell food once at the market and then with that gold from selling the food, you buy wood and you buy it once. And with that, you can build a TP and a and get your hunting dogs upgrade. Now, when I say TP, I don't mean trade post. I mean the small sort of TP building. And you usually want to put that near your TC. And that boosts gathering rate for your vills. See, it's not happening yet. But have a look down here. The TP hut. That's it. Yeah, we can call it the TP hut. Yeah. So you can see food is going up. And what I'm going to do. There you go. I sold it. And then boom, the quick switch. And then look at that macro. Absolutely beautiful. Because you, when you buy the wood, you buy it for 100. And then 50 goes on the TP hut. 50 goes on hunting dogs. And you're only really left with 50 coin left over, which is quite nice. So I think the macro there is quite sweet for that. If you do find a really juicy wood treasure or two, I guess you could skip the whole market thing. But you don't know what you're going to get early in the game. And you really want to get this as early as possible. Okay. So, yeah, so hopefully everything is okay. Guys, let me know in chat. We had an issue with the stream um, before for people on YouTube. You obviously will not see it. But for some reason, my game just went really strange. And it just froze. And I don't know why. Hopefully that doesn't happen again. Okay, so with your Explorer, you want to try and grab Treasure Guardians if you can. Now, the Lakota Explorer is very, very fast. So I'd recommend getting straight across the map, trying to contest some of the treasures against your opponent, if you can, and also nabbing um, treasure guardians, converting them. You can see I've got a colonial gunslinger here. Try doing that if you can. Getting, obviously, your herdables is really good as well. Um, no worries, Animus. And also grabbing the native TPs for vision as well is really important. And here, this map's quite good because you do have access to the Berber Nomad as well for further eco. I um, didn't go for this in this game. but And we can see here, I'm going to be quite brazen. I'm going to try and go for the treasure here that gets me a goat. And I've got to take out two honey badgers. And look, lo and behold, his villager comes over. And I still secure it. I managed to secure the treasure. But stupidly, I walk off and I forget about the goat. And um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Pretty much. In a nutshell. Okay, right. So now I've got my food. I've got uh, 14 villagers. Okay, I'm going to do a quick pause again. So 14 villagers. We're ready to age up. What we want to do is we want to go for the messenger. That's going to be a really fast age up. And when we're aging up in transition, we want to move all villagers over to wood. Apart from one or two. One or two you want to start herding. <clears throat> Do you want to start herding the giraffes here? And you want to start herding wild elephants over here. But what you want to do relatively soon is start to move three villagers off of your wood and start to move them over into a forward war hut position. We want to get a war hut out into the middle of the map, ideally on the opponent's side. And the reason we want to do that, we want to get a war hut down ASAP so we can get our first unit shipment to come out of our war hut. 
Okay, so you can see three villagers are now peeling off. They peeled off a little too late, to be honest. They should they should be building the war hut right now. They should be on that space, building the war hut, getting it up. Unfortunately, I was a little late here. I'm still learning the build myself, but I've got to say, guys, I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I hope you give it a go and have some fun with it as well. And Let me know down in the comments below. And, of course, let me know in chat right now if you've done this kind of strategy and uh, you've enjoyed it. So, <clears throat> first shipment in H2, we're going to be going, we're going to be rolling with the four axe riders. So, you most of the time you'll go four axe riders because you can get that really early raiding potential. Very, very good. Especially considering the fact that you're aging up early. So, that is really nice. Sometimes you might want to go for a, either the club warriors or the uh, Seaton Bowman. The Club Warriors are good for sieging, so if you want to put some early pressure on buildings, go for it. My opponent here is going for an outpost and a barracks to try and challenge my war hut. And also, use your three villagers after building the war hut to start to pull in a hunt close to your war hut as well. So you can see here, four axe riders are now out. We go to my vision. You can see I'm going to be going off to the back behind the map to try and see if I can get some vil raids and immediately I'm making Seaton Bowman to come out as well. So the big thing about this build order is managing your macro. It's keeping that decent split of wood and food to enable you to constantly be creating units and you can see here I'm just annoying villagers and also I'm now bringing my axe riders round behind his base to start getting some vils and we get a nab a villager there which is beautiful. And if you can get one or two villagers, that's great. You know, the Axe Riders, that's what they're there for. Use them for that purpose. And also they're good for any kind of skirmisher pop, crossbow pop that your opponent will try and do. Axe Riders will be able to clear those up very well. Don't try and lose your Axe Riders too easily. Don't throw them in and just lose them so quickly. His Explorer is a little bit out here. So I thought oh, I'm going to take him. I'm going to get some XP. So I go for it, and boom. You see he's got a lot of vills standing around. He's, he's in a bit of disarray here. So look, I stupidly didn't wait for the last hit, um, and um, I managed to get that other villager there. So doing good, getting Explorer down, couple of vills, very, very nice. Next card is going to be the Seaton Bowman. So what I suggest, guys, is that you always think about three unit shipments in H2. So when you get into H2, three unit shipments, and then think about a resource shipment. So that can either be 700 gold if you want to then transition into age three. It could be 700 wood if you want to take the TP line. You want to maybe get another war hut, maybe a corral. So then you can start making cavalry. And that's a real big commitment to age two. But later on in the game, you might want to go for the great hunter. But only get the great hunter when you can fully maximize on the resources from it. So you can see here, you want to make sure, you want to wait until you've really got a decent chunk of uh, the Great Hunter, which is the 1500, so you can get a decent amount of resources. So you can see here, I'm still producing C tan. I'm also getting C tan, so I probably need to maybe think about getting um, some, some uh, Club Warriors. But I know that he's got Rax, so I, I guess that, you know, Hussars are probably not going to be happening just yet. And I've still got my axe riders floating around, you know, and I'm still making sure to produce villagers. Very important. I can see he's gone very defensive. He's sort of walled himself in here. And I don't want to lose any more axe riders. So while that's happening, I'm going to push him on the front. So it's kind of always making sure you're doing like a pincer attack. You're, you're pushing from north, from south. You're keeping him preoccupied. You can see that... He's not too sure what to do. He's kind of scrambling. I've got 21 villagers. He's got 26. He has a better economy, but he I'm keeping him boxed in. Yeah, the Great Hunter does give you that gather rate, which is nice, but I wouldn't suggest getting it too early in the game. I would definitely get your unit shipments out, get a resource shipment, and then go Great Hunter. That's what I would suggest. And you can see here that he's got some musks. But it's going to be okay for my Seatan moment. I've got plenty of them. Outpost goes down, which is fantastic. And those Seatan are going to be able to clear up a lot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Axe Riders here to, to go for a snare. I'm just going to go in to slow the Musketeers down. Club Warriors are going to start to get on them as well. And that that is beautiful. 
Look at that, absolutely beautiful. And I'm going to use some of the sea tambos to pick a vill off here as well while I'm at it. And that's going to make him scramble. He's going to scramble. He's going to go for militiamen. I've got a decent mass of units here. I'm comfortable taking down the militiamen here. Sometimes you might not be comfortable. If you're not comfortable, back out. It's not worth it. Don't lose your critical mass. But in this instance, I'm looking pretty good. I've cleared up the militiamen. I don't know what else he's got left. And I'm going to sink it with two Takala soldiers. Very nice card for like a Lance Cavalry. And perfect. What, what pops out? He's gone for the Longbowman. And I can just try and get my Club Warriors on this. Really get into melee with the Longbowman. Stop them firing. And they are gone down as well. Setan Bowman still doing work on the Settlers as well. And there is the GG from Brasky. There it is. So guys, there is a nice, well-demonstrated... Lakota H2 rush. You know, it's it's yes, it's a rush, but we're still thinking about eco a bit. We've got that hunting dogs early on. We open up with the market. We get the hunting dogs in and we ensure that we try and, you know, lure our hunts in as best we can. I didn't do a great job over this side, but just trying to keep as close to your TC because your opponent may counter raid. Uh, that is one thing that I was expecting him to do, but he didn't is, you know, counter raiding. And yeah, keeping Axe Riders alive is so crucial. Do not throw your Axe Riders away. And as I mentioned, always think about three unit shipments ideally, maybe four, but three. And then think about either a resource shipment, going for Great Hunter, depending on where you are. And then you can make a decision as to whether you want to still commit into H2, take the TP line, Stagecoach, or whether you want to then think about transitioning into H3 and going down an H3 route. So there we go, guys. I hope you really enjoyed that. Wrap that up very quickly for you. Let me know down in the comments below. We are live on Twitch at the moment, of course. So let me know what your thoughts are of this build order. Have you tried it? If not, I really suggest you give it a go. If you've never played Lakota before and you do like some aggression, I would give this a go. It's very different to the standard kind of bow rider opening or axe rider opening that we normally see for Lakota, where they tend to do either an FF or a semi-FF kind of style. This is more the classic age two pressure play. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I'll catch you in the next video or the next stream. Peace out, guys. Bye.